The head of the Center for Countering Disinformation of Ukraine, Andrei Kovalenko, reported that Kim's troops are not only in Kursk region, but have already come under fire from the Ukrainian armed forces. He wrote about this today on his social network page. However, Kovalenko did not provide any more details. Only in October did it become known that Russia had requested troops from Pyongyang to help in the war against Ukraine. According to Western intelligence, Kim sent 6,000 to 12,000 of his troops to Russia, who arrived by ship in the Far East. It is known that they had to undergo a young fighter course at one of the training grounds of the Russian Ministry of Defense. After that, they were equipped in the military uniform of the Russian armed forces and also issued passports of Russian citizenship. Experts immediately reported that Putin would use these troops in Kursk region to drive the Ukrainian armed forces out of there. At the same time, he would not have to recall reserves from other parts of the front for fighting in Kursk region. The Kremlin has constantly denied the presence of DPRK troops on Russian territory. During a UN Security Council meeting on the issue of DPRK troops on Russian territory, Nebenzia said that there were allegedly no Kim soldiers in Russia. Moreover, he accused Ukraine and the West of such disinformation in order to give the go-ahead for the introduction of NATO troops into Ukraine. According to Ukrainian intelligence, Putin armed Kim's soldiers with 60mm mortars, Kalashnikov assault rifles, sniper rifles, machine guns and Phoenix anti-tank missiles. Ukrainian political expert Alexander Morozov says that Putin seems to be responding to the Kursk region asymmetrically, paradoxically enough. That is, a metaphor is possible that in response to the fact that Ukrainian troops have entered the Kursk region and are holding 600 square kilometers there, as of yesterday, Putin could have invaded Estonia to further escalate the situation. But he took a similar step, in fact, showing the whole West that he is breaking the old concept of relations with the DPRK, all of his past participation in sanctions against the DPRK, and moving to full-scale cooperation, making it clear that Iran could also find itself in this position in the future. Because Moscow has signed an agreement on strategic cooperation with Pyongyang, and now Peskov, just yesterday, commenting on this, said that no one should be concerned about this. It is Russia's own business how to act within the framework of such a strategic agreement and whatever we do is reasonable and legal. Of course, this is not the case, but the Kremlin presents it that way, Morozov said. The Israeli military said on Monday its troops were continuing operations in Lebanon against Hezbollah. They claimed IDF troops located terrorist infrastructure, military sites, weapon stockpiles, a missile storage facility, and compounds designated for infiltrating into Israeli territory that they destroyed. Some experts say Israel may be aiming to create a depopulated buffer zone, a strategy it has already deployed along its border with Gaza. Hezbollah began firing rockets, drones and missiles from Lebanon into Israel in solidarity with Hamas immediately after the Hamas-led October 7, 2023, attack on Israel, which triggered the war in Gaza. The year-long cross-border fighting boiled over to full-blown war on October 1, when Israeli forces launched a ground invasion of southern Lebanon for the first time since 2006.